Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name's Chris and this is Taylor Welding. Today we're gonna to be welding six inch pipe schedule 40. And we're gonna be welding on the bottom of it. Now I'm gonna talk about the spacing band, gap, stinger, hood, how thick the spacing band needs to be, how much land you need to put on it. I'm gonna cover all that right now, but if you wanna go ahead and skip to straight to the welding, because I know a lot of people just wanna see the welding and that's it, Go ahead and skip it. It's right down at the bottom. Just boop, go to the welding. But for now, let's cover some of the things that you guys have been asking me because I desire to help you guys. I've been welding for over 20 years, well over 20 years, and it's I've been called the welder. You know, there's the welder over there. <laughs> I've been called the welder for a long, long time, and now I don't have to do it anymore. I'm recently retired from pipe welding, and the reason I was able to retire is because we were able to make a substantial amount of money and investing in businesses and other assets that pay us to own them. So that's what I desire for you guys to do in the future. So I hope this helps you. If it does, hit the like button, subscribe, and ring the bell. First, the spacing band, okay? The spacing band is not very thick. You don't need a very thick spacing band. I've got some people in the comments welding a gap that's 332. That's like, to me, way, way too big. But to each their own, however you're comfortable doing it. I use this one, and I'm gonna actually measure it with a micrometer so you'll know exactly how big it is. And guys, don't do this with your micrometer. It'll, it'll drive a machinist nuts. <laughs> but uh, it is exactly, oh, 52 thousandths. That is not very big. A, 60, a sixteenth is .625. That would make one eighth, one twenty-five. So it's a little under a sixteenth of an inch. So now you know exactly how thick that is. I want to flop this over and measure this land. The land is what you grind on there. And I've never measured a land before. I just put something on there and go with it. But I'm going to say it is about eighty-five thousandths or so. Yeah. Let's say 80 thousandths on the land. Now that's not that much of a land, but it's pretty thin pipe. If you had a big old chunk of pipe that could really take some heat, um, you know, you could use even less in my opinion. It gives you more surface area, really sucks the heat out of it. Um, but this is a little thinner, so maybe a little heavier land, if you follow me. So that covers that, but really it's about the same guys. All the time, it's about that. About what I showed you. And you can turn it up or down to correct any, you know, or speed, travel, and heat. Y you can manipulate all those to cover each other, you know, fix things as you go, because your fits in the field aren't gonna be that good. And if you don't know how to deal with imperfections, you're just gonna have to deal with imperfections. <laughs> you're gonna have to learn. So that covers this, and that's about, what we're gonna do right there. Now, I wanna cover the stubby rod saver. I absolutely love these stingers and they don't make them anymore. It's a real bummer. But they were made in the USA and it, it will crush a rod. You, you stick it in here and you twist it and crunch that baby down and it's there. I mean, you, you can bend this thing however you want to. It's not coming out of your stinger. And what it'll do is it'll put a big old dimple. See where it crushed that rod? So it's a shame they don't make any more. I've got a few more. I don't really have to sell them. I just don't hang on to them. But if you guys want one and you're subscribers, then hey, I'll send you one. But they're like, they're 60 bucks. That's what I'll get rid of them for. But like I said, I don't have to sell them. Okay, next, the welding hood. This is a Sarge pancake. I've had three of them. And they all do the same thing, meaning the ones I've had. They usually break right here. This little piece of, I don't know, really light wood. Somebody put in the comments what that is. It comes apart right there, but it's easily fixed with Gorilla Glue. You can just Gorilla Glue that baby up one time and it is good to go. I like these because they seem to be lighter than the Wendy's. And it's what, I, you know, find something that works do it. The lens is a, 
I'm going to call it a Tafui. I have been enjoying this lens. Um, I've used it over three months before I ever made a video on it. The link is in the description and I'll pin it in the comments. And if you use the link, you'll get a little discount. And let me know if you like it. I really, I've really been impressed with it. Next, so I've covered, I think that's everything. Okay, the, the welding machine. This is the heat box on a Vantage. Okay, I've used 300 Vantages my whole career. I've bought two of them. That's how long they last. They last a really long time. And the first one I bought still running fine. Uh, so, you know, say what you want to about welding machines and all that. Just do whatever you want. I just wanted a machine that I could just push the button and go to work. You know, Kubota diesel, go. I didn't want to have to mess with the armature and, and do all that stuff you pipeliners like to do. That's just not my thing. Uh, we, we tigged a lot. We did, it's a very versatile machine, so uh, that's just the one I picked and I've really enjoyed it. Now, I'm, I'm beating on three and, a quarter, three and three quarters. I'll let you know if I turn it up or down, but that's about 95. All machines are different. Don't get hung up on what one machine runs on. You'll have to find what runs good on yours. Um, but that's it. I'm going to tack this up here, here. I'm going to cut it so you can actually see how the weld goes in, and I'll try to make each one, each third of this pipe different so we can have some different scenarios uh, because, you know, things happen and they usually happen on the bottom. But if you can get comfortable weld on the bottom, you're not going to have any trouble anywhere else. The bottom, that last, right there on Dead Man's Curve to the bottom is usually where, you know, the problems are. I'd say 90% of the repairs are somewhere in there. And a lot of them are sucked back. And we're going to fix that today practice. At the end of the video, I'm going to put a clip of what Austin did and why I was, uh, you know, moved to, you, to make this video, because this is going to help somebody. Let's get into it. So that gap is exactly 52 thousandths. All right, good. For the purpose of this video, I wanted that gap to be jammed up because that's gonna happen to you in the field. I mean, there is, you couldn't, it is tight, tight, tight. But we'll address that right now. This is gonna happen. This is going to happen probably every day, <laughs> really. But here's the ticket. Here's the fix. It's no big deal. Take your 1 8 grind disc, not quarter inch. If you're using a quarter inch grind disc, grind the bead out of pipe, then you're messing up right out of the gate. And on top of that, this is less than 8 inch. You see where we've been grinding on it and it's gone? It's even sharper. So I'm going to be able to soften that up. I'll be able to grind this and make it real thin and then I'll put the bead in and it'll look just like the rest of the pot. Let's do that now. I had a little tip. You see how deep it's getting? It's getting really deep in there. So you're we're about where it needs to be, so now you can start twisting your disc a little bit. Twist it, and then twist it, and it'll, it'll open it up like, like it was. Now I'm going to turn it up just a little bit, and this is where it would be handy to have a helper because you don't really know what you got, but I bet we can get it in there. All 
All right, nothing wrong with that. That's the perfect torch flame right there. I get you a piece of angle iron. Get it hot up here. And then you're going to want to move back. I knew that was going to happen. Come on, man. I'm going to stop and let it get good and hot. Now. All right, guys, just a quick tip. If you'll turn that torch down, you'll see there's no slag. All I did was hit it with a wire wheel. So clean your tip and turn it down, and you won't have to do a bunch of grinding after you cut. All right, I'm going to clamp this down, and I'm going to put a tack in the bottom here from the bottom. That way you can see how we run up on the tack from both sides, okay? All right, that bead's in there. It's a little bit hot. You see how it's getting, if it's too hot, it'll eat the side, it'll get real fat on you. So, not bad. But I'm gonna go ahead and taper these tacks and try to show you exactly how I've tapered them, what I think works best. The side with the keyhole usually doesn't get tapered. Not much. This side where you started will get tapered a little bit more. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, you see how I didn't get too far into this? I just tapered that tack. Now this side, this side there's no need for anything. If you just absolutely have to do something, You can do that, but I wouldn't have done that normally. Now when I start coming up to this tack, I'm going to start letting it get everything hot and it's, it's going in. I'm, I'm putting a little pressure now and now I'm going to put a little bit more pressure because I'm starting to, you're wanting to push that even further in there. So when you're coming up and you start running into it, just push on it just a little bit and then start easing up. When you start getting on this tack, start easing up and then come out. Same way on this side. When you start getting in, when you start coming to this, start pushing, just push on it just a little bit. And it's, you're still, it's somewhere between pushing and not. But when you come up on this tack right here, you're gonna wanna just push just a little bit and it'll really tie it in nice. It's, it's kind of a feel your way through it situation. Now I'm coming up to that hole. I'm gonna step back a little bit, step back a little bit, push. And that's it. Just run it up on that ramp that I made. Close right up. Okay, so the bead's in it, and you'll notice I was a little hot right there, and it started getting wide on me. If it does that, 
uh, turn it down a little bit. And that's where your welding machine is going to kind of take up the slack. It's where uh, a good welding machine will be able to take that you push in on a 6010, uh, or any rod for that matter. But I've got the, the bead ground out of it on this side. Don't worry about that little bit of nothing. You can't see it, but it's not very deep. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to, when I get down to the bottom, I'm going to long it, long, long step it all the way over to this side. And then when we come around this side, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm not going to try to hang down there and just stop on the bottom. Because when you do that, it'll, it'll pop some suck back in it. So you want to just kind of come down and then boop, 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 boop. And then on the other side, do, 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 do. And then when you double lap it, your filler, your, your hot pass, will look like it's supposed to. And you, because you don't want to just sit there on the bottom and really dig it out. You'll blow a hole in it. And then go back to my video on how to fix that. Because that's going to happen too, especially when you have a new helper. All right, let's put the hot pass in it. We'll buff that bead off and see it. I don't know. We're reaching over. I'm going a little faster, taking bigger steps. I'm reaching over, over, over. Get out of it. All right, I'm going to flip this around because my tripod's in the way. Okay, we've got a decision to make. Uh, I'm a little bit shallow over here, and I'm just right down here. And that's about perfect too, as far as capping. So we're going from, from bead, hot pass, straight to cap right now. So there's not enough room to, to put another 532. If you did, it'd be too much. And if you overfill this thing, if you fill it up where it's a, a little bit over flush, it's gonna not look good when you cap it. That's just from my take on things. My machine, the way I'm used to welding, leave it a little bit below flush before you cap. But if you put another 532 filler in here, it's gonna distort those edges and it's gonna not work out for you. Uh, if you think different, please tell me in the comments. I'm just trying to tell you exactly what I do because that's, that's what I wanna do. That's all I know, you know? So the welder in me that wants to get things done and make a good weld and move on to the next one would grab a five millimeter and I would cap this unit. And I know there's some welding inspector out there saying, oh, you got to put a filler in it, Chris. You can't do that. Well, I've been doing it like that for a long time. A 532 is going to be too much. Look at the difference in those, in the, in those rods. Let's look at this side. I mean, this is like welding with a broomstick compared to this one. So, and there's another option. We could put a 6010 in there. You could, you could take your 6010 and just feather in the shallow areas. Okay, do that as well. Or if you want to go completely by the book, you can get a 1 8 80 plus or 70, 70 plus 80 10 and put a 1 8, you know, 70 plus in there. But we're not doing that. I'm thinking probably five millimeter and cap this unit because that's what I would do in the field. The only drawback is this is thin pipe and it's going to get hot quick. So uh, if you do run a five millimeter on some thin pipe and if it's in the code and all that, you know, you got to do whatever they want. But if they don't care, which most of the time they just want a good weld. You know, B31, 3 Severe, X-Ray, every day, every weld, my whole career has been like that. And I try, I do my best to give them what they want. If it's left up to me, I would probably just cap this with a 5 millimeter. So that's probably what I'm going to do because it's important to me to show you exactly, you know, how things work. Because this, 
this hot pass is not like super slick, you know, like a like you a lot of YouTubers want to show you only the, the slickest welds on top. You'll see a lot of rollouts and a lot of top welds. I, I want to show you the real stuff, what really happens on the bottom, you know. No, it's not gonna look like the top. Not normally. With practice it'll look really close. But it's always gonna kinda look like the bottom, because it is the bottom. So I'm gonna flip this over and put a five millimeter cap on it because that's what I do. Because that's what I would do in any circumstance. So the beads in it, the hot the hot fillers in it. Now the cap's fixing be in it. Let's do it. Filling in. I'm taking little steps. On the bottom, I'm passing the bottom now. You'll see it start to get kind of heavy. And I'll step out of it. All right, notice, you see how far past, see this is the bottom, the very bottom. And I went on past it and it started throwing up that, it started getting heavy. As you go up that other side, gravity's gonna wanna pull that back. So now when I come down this side and I start getting on that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just feather it in and step out of it. As I was editing this video, I noticed I was missing a clip. And this has been happening because my phone has been getting so hot, I've been having to put it in the freezer to cool it off so I can try to finish the video. So I missed that clip, and there is no redoing it. Enjoy the rest of the video. All right, guys. You'll see how this side came down, and then I crawled up on this side and just put just weld it on top of that other weld. All right, so that bottom is a little bit higher than the top. So now we don't have a low bottom. Now I will, um, and I could have made this look a lot better with 532s, but I'm not in a beauty pageant. I want to show you guys how to make solid welds fast, because that's what it takes. And nobody care you know, I've worked with them guys. They spend more time sawing on it with a file than welding. <laughs> We're at a weld. So I'm going to cut some straps out of this and rip them apart for you and see if I can pass a, a what they call a nick test, where you cut a strap, you nick it, and then you break it open and see if there's any slag in it. Let's do it. All right, so when it comes to test, the nick test really finds out what's in it. And what that is, is you take your weld and you nick it on both sides and you stick it in this vise right here and you rip it apart. Now I did two of them directly off the bottom to see if they'll hold up. I guess it passed the bend test. There it goes. Camera won't focus. 
All right, guys, we got them bent, broke, I mean, and they're clean. I can zoom in on it. Clean. It looks like slag, but it's not. It's just how it broke. Hi, guys. It's about 10 o'clock at night. I'm ready to knock off. <laughs> But thank you for being here. Let me know if you made it to the end of the video. And if you have any questions or anything that you want to ask or want me to make a video about, please let me know. Have an awesome, awesome day. Later.